Welcome to this installment of AA Computers and Technology. Today, I'm going to be making a little upgrade to this HP EliteBook 8440p. So my sister's laptop, I gave her this, uh, I believe last year, I received this as a review sample from Gearbest. This is a Onda O Book 11. It's basically a cheap Chinese knockoff of the Lenovo Yoga. And it worked fine. I actually used it for a couple months and then handed it down to her. Uh, worked okay as a daily driver. Could even uh, run some light games like Portal, uh, and I do have a video on this little laptop, so if you want to check out the video on this, I'll put the link to it in the description. But long story short, um, after about a year of service, it started having issues. Uh, the keyboard no longer works properly. Uh, it still works fine as a tablet, uh, but I am experiencing some keyboard issues with it now, and I'm not really sure what to do. Honestly, this isn't even worth repairing. Uh, I got it for free, and uh, online, these are only worth around 120 bucks. So these are uh, pretty cheap little laptops. So I decided it was time to give her a proper laptop. And this HP EliteBook should make a great school machine for her. If you guys remember, I picked up a whole lot of these from a government auction. I believe uh, they came out to be about 25 bucks a pop. Uh, so definitely not too bad. These go on eBay for, I think around, uh, in good condition, 80 bucks. So that was definitely a steal. I sold most of them uh, and then I kept one just for my sister. I picked the one uh, that was in the best condition. And as you guys can see, this thing nearly looks brand new. There are a couple dents on the lid, very, very small dents. You might not even be able to see them on camera. Um, so this laptop is in near mint condition right now. So what I'm gonna be doing today is first off throwing a 120 gigabyte Adata SP550 solid state drive into this laptop. That shouldn't take too long, should be a pretty easy process. Um, and then once I have the solid state drive in there, I might make a couple more upgrades. I'm looking at the uh, service manual right now and I might be able to throw some more RAM in there and maybe um, swap out the thermal paste on the CPU. I'm not guaranteeing that at the moment because once again, I have to crack this thing open and actually see how easy it is to service. I've never actually worked on one of these uh, HP Elite books before, so it should be interesting tearing this thing down. Uh, but if it's easy to get access to uh, the RAM slots and the CPU, I might be making those small upgrades as as well because I do have a four gigabyte stick of DDR3 in the back um, and I also have some uh, Arctic Silver, uh, what was it? I think it's Arctic Silver 5 sitting around somewhere or maybe it's uh, Arctic Silver MX or, or uh, something like that. I'll have to go in the back and check again but I'll stop rambling now and we will go ahead Tear this thing down, throw the solid state drive inside, install Windows. I think I'm going to go with Windows 7 at this point. Um, I tried to get Linux up and running on this thing because uh, I, a couple days ago I tried to use this as a temporary server for a project. I couldn't get Ubuntu server to install on this, so I think we're going to have to go with uh, Windows. And uh, it has a Windows 7 Pro sticker on the bottom, so let's go with Windows 7. I like Windows 7. It's still supported for now, uh, and you know, it won't cost me anything to throw that on this machine. So let's get started. Pop the solid state drive in this thing and see what else uh, we can do to this little laptop. So I've run into my first major snag. This laptop's actually very easy to take apart. All you have to do is remove a couple screws and then you pretty much have access to everything. But I don't have Torx, uh, a Torx bit that will fit these screws. They're all too big. So I'm gonna have to make a trip to Home Depot uh, to buy a set of small, smaller Torx bits. Um, by the way, if you wanna check out the user guide or the uh, service guide, um, for this computer, I will put the link to it down in the description. So if you're trying to uh, take one apart yourself, you can have that resource on hand. I just got back from Home Depot and I managed to find the bit that I needed. But unfortunately, of course, you can't just buy one bit. You have to buy a whole entire set. So it cost me like 10 bucks just to grab this thing. I wish they just sold individual bits, but I guess I'm wishing for too much there. Uh, anyway, point is, got the bit now and I should be able to remove this heatsink along with the panel right here. Um, so I can continue tearing this thing down.
Okay, so I just finished the upgrades and now I am writing a Windows 7 image to a USB flash drive. So I was able to do everything that I wanted to do to this PC. I threw a 4GB stick of RAM in here and that took the place of the 2GB stick of RAM that was originally in the RAM slot under the keyboard. So now we have a total of 6 gigs of RAM inside this system. I also installed that 120 gigabyte SP550 solid state drive and I replaced the thermal compound. Now, I accidentally put uh, actually way too much thermal compound uh, on top of the CPU, but it's not really a big deal and I'm not too worried about it, but that Arctic Silver, or not Arctic Silver, that uh, Arctic MX4 uh, came out a lot faster than I intended it would. So you can see the system specs right here. If the camera will focus, there we go. So you can see our six gigs of RAM, uh, our i5 M520, that's a dual core processor with four threads, I believe, uh, running at 2.4 gigahertz. And once I get Windows 7 installed on here, I will run uh, a benchmark or two and show you a little bit more detail as far as the hardware is concerned. As you guys can see, I now have Windows 7 Pro installed on this computer. This is the 64-bit edition, and I've been messing around with this system for several hours now because it's taken a very long time to set this thing up, um, especially taking into consideration the amount of time it took to update this thing. Uh, I think I probably had updates running for a good uh, three hours. Uh, so that was a very slow and painful process. But as you can see, I have the system up and running now. I did hit one tiny snag, and that was the fact that the four gigabyte stick of RAM that I put inside the system appears to be bad. So we're still rocking four gigabytes of RAM inside the system. Now I did run some uh, light performance tests, I ran Passmark, and I also ran the Windows Experience Index. Uh, I also popped open uh, CPU-Z, so you guys can check out some more specifications of that CPU. Overall, uh, performance eh, was okay. I mean, once again, this is just an office machine, not really intended for any sort of uh, heavy 3D tasks, such as gaming, and the benchmarks do reflect that. If you take a look at the pass mark score, you can see that this thing clearly is not a gaming machine. Uh, we're working with Intel integrated graphics though. Uh, despite that fact, it is very, very fast when it comes to day-to-day -to -day office tasks. So I'll just start opening up some applications. I'll pop open Chrome, and as you can see, it opens like that, thanks to that solid state drive. This is a very snappy office computer. So I'm going to go to my website right now, and as you can see, the page loads up just like that. Scrolling is nice and smooth. Multitasking capabilities of this system are very, very good. Uh, we have four gigabytes of RAM in here with Windows 7, so we can uh, perform plenty of tasks at the same time, and I'll demonstrate that right now. So I'm gonna open uh, up a couple tabs in Chrome, we'll open up a couple more applications, and then I'll call it a day as far as the demo is concerned, because I don't wanna keep beating a dead horse. So I'm playing one of my YouTube videos right now, or trying to, let's get past this ad. And as you can hear, audio is working. I'm gonna set this to 1080p at 60 FPS. Uh, I believe the screen resolution uh, is 1366 by 768 on this system. We're gonna full screen. And as you can see, video playback is nice and smooth. That is very, very, very smooth video playback. It's not dropping any frames at all. So that looks great. So I'm gonna back out of here. We'll pop open one more website. I'll go to the Associated Press. There we go. And by the way, I did order a couple more things for this laptop. So I ordered a uh, power supply for it because right now I'm just using my personal test power supply. Uh, I wanna get one that my sister can use because I'm not gonna give her my test power supply because it has a bunch of different like uh, um, leads to it uh, to match up to you know a bunch of different laptops. Um, so I bought that power supply. I also bought a brand new battery for the system. Even though the battery right now isn't too bad, it's running off battery. And uh, according to Windows, we have an hour and 20 minutes left on that charge. So now we're going to get to the multitasking capabilities. Pop open an instance of Word. No problem there. Yes, sure. Okay, oh my goodness. Thank you, thank you for all the spam. My right, blank document, and I'll just type something out here. Yeah, no problem. Uh, can handle opening Word and Chrome at the same time just fine. We'll open up PowerPoint too. Why not? Let's pop open Excel as well. And you can see it has no problem multitasking here.
I'm gonna minimize some of these. How much RAM are we using right now? I mean, I'm not really sure what else to open on this machine because once again, this is Office machine. Don't have too many apps installed at the moment. I can also pop open VLC Media Player. And we have all these applications open at the same time. So that's gonna be about it for this video. This should make a very nice machine for my sister, a great daily driver and a great school system. Now, if you wanna check out any of the stuff that I used here today, including the uh, Arctic MX4, uh, the Adata SP550, or actually I think they released a new model so they might not be selling the SP550 anymore. I think the SP600 just recently came out and I need to get my hands on that model uh, to test it out and see how it compares against the SP550. Because the SP550 is a very good solid state drive. Um, but once again, if you wanna check out any of the stuff that I used here today, all the links will be down in the description. If you wanna support me, you can use my Amazon affiliate links. If Also, if you wanna support me, you can use my eBay affiliate link as well. Don't forget we have a Patreon. All those links will be down in the description. Don't forget to drop a like on this video. If you didn't like this video, please tell me why. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave a comment down in the comments section. That's gonna be about it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next installment of AA Computers and Technology.